We played nearly 140 games on the channel last year. Unfortunately, I didn't get around to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Tetris Effect, or the Spyro Trilogy, so they won't be on this list. However, they will have an opportunity for 2019's list because we do things different here. This top 25 is about my favorite 25 games I played this year. Some even came out as far back as 2013. These are my top 25 games of 2018. Number 25, Animorphine. Animorphine has a Metacritic score of 61. I gave it a 7.5. Sure, Animorphine has the problem of repeating areas too many times, losing the initial spark of intrigue, but I feel like this walking simulator tells such an impactful story of depression and loss of love, all filled with a mystery. I love games like this that take me through an experience, through the mind of someone else. I understand games like this aren't for everyone, but they're certainly for me. Number 24, Fox and Fours. Fox and Forest has a Metacritic score of 71. I gave it an 8. Fox and Forest is one of my favorite Metroidvanias of the year, which is odd to say because I don't really like Metroidvanias, but this one intrigued me with its swift environment manipulation. Changing the seasons of a level, this kept me hooked, searching for secrets, and at times gave me the enjoyment of a 2D platformer I haven't found since Shovel Knight. Number 23, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform has a Metacritic score of 82. I gave it an 8. I love me some kart racers, and Sonic All-Stars Racing Transform is easily one of my favorite of all time. I love the speed of this racer, it's perfect. The variety of tracks and modes, character stats, all sweetened by the tracks changing as the race goes on. Sonic Racing Transform taps into something special that I'd love to see continue with the upcoming Team Sonic Racing. Number 22, Minute. Minute has a Metacritic score of 81, I gave it an 8. Minute is another one of those odd interesting games I play this year. It's a game all about is doing as much as you can in a minute. You have 60 seconds until you reset in the last bed you slept in. It sounds frustrating, but it's actually quite fun running through the sections, getting what you need and getting out of there. Trying to push it further and further each time. This is one of those games that I feel every gamer should give a try. Number 21, Fey. Fey has a Metacritic score of 73. I gave it a 7. Fey is adorable and gorgeous. Sure, the charm slowly dies as the game runs out of ideas, but up until that point, I love the charm of exploring this forest as a little fox creature, unlocking new moves, singing to animals, and exploring this 3D platforming collectathon like game. Number 20, Dead Rising 4 Frank's Big Package. Dead Rising 4 Frank's Big Package has a Metacritic score of 72. I gave it an 8. Dead Rising 4 is my first Dead Rising game, so I didn't know what to expect. Turns out I fell in love. This is some of the most fun and most satisfying zombie slaying since the original Dead Island game. I loved exploring the world for silly outfits and weapons. Basically, everything could be picked up in this game and used as one, making this probably the most immersive zombie game I've ever played too. I'm tired of zombie games as much as the next guy, but even I couldn't walk away from Dead Rising 4. Number 19, Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom. Nino Kuni 2 has a Metacritic score of 84. I gave it a 7.5. I played both Nino Kuni games for the first time in 2018, and I fell in love with the series. I was sad and a bit disappointed in the gameplay change over the first Nino Kuni, but Evan's journey of building a kingdom still got his hooks in me. I still have hopes for Nino Kuni 3 we go back to more Pokemon style instead of the beat em up arena fighting we have going on here. Number 18, Super Daryl Deluxe. Super Daryl Deluxe has a Metacritic score of 72. I gave it an 8. Super Daryl Deluxe is one of the most under the radar games of 2018. I love this game so much. It drags on forever, but it's basically Napoleon Dynamite the game. It's funny, witty, and a bunch of dumb high school kid drama. This game just feels like an addictive throwback. Exploring dungeons, aka classrooms, finding secrets, and completing tasks. Super Daryl Deluxe is a hard game to put down, and I feel like it deserves a chance in your game's library. Number 17, Florence. Florence has a Metacritic score of 82. I give it an 8. Florence is a mobile-only game that's essentially an interactive storybook. It's a story of dreams and love, and you'll go through the ups and downs of both. Florence is a really tiny experience, maybe only 35 to 45 minutes long, but it's a cute little heartwarming game. Number 16, Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 has a Metacritic score of 97. I gave it an 8.5. Red Dead Redemption 2 is easily the most overrated game of 2018, but I still love my initial 20 hours with it. You feel like you're living another life here. Easily one of the most immersive games of the year. It's one of those games where it isn't about having fun. It's again about experiencing another life. And while I don't love it as much as everyone else, I can still appreciate how special this game is. Number 15, Unravel 2. Unravel 2 has a Metacritic score of 81. I gave it a 7.5. 
Unravel is my favorite puzzle platformer of all time, so needless to say, I was so excited when Unravel 2 launched the very day it was announced. I instantly bought it and hopped in this now up to 2 player experience. Unravel 2 doesn't live up to the original, especially with the storytelling, but this is still a cute, charming, family friendly puzzle platformer. The Unravel franchise I feel is a must experience gaming franchise for all gamers. I feel it's way too overloved. Number 14, Devil May Cry HD. The original Devil May Cry has a Metacritic score of 94. I gave Devil May Cry HD an 8. 2018 was the year I finally played the Devil May Cry trilogy, and I'm so happy I did. Devil May Cry 2 is highly skippable, but despite its clunky data mechanics, Devil May Cry is easily my favorite of the trilogy and worth going back for. You feel the origins of games the likes of Bayonetta and even God of War here. Devil May Cry is a brilliant game that still holds up nearly two decades later. Number 13, Vampire. Vampire has a Metacritic score of 72. I gave it a 7. I don't know what it is, but Vampire really stuck its fangs in me. Ha! I'm so funny. Have you subscribed yet? But really, Vampire's just, I don't know, I love it just as much as I hate it. Vampire feels like a mid-cycle PS3 game, but if you can look past all of its dated feeling design choices, this game is so fun to experience. It's so fun interacting with this world and role-playing as a vampire, luring unsuspecting victims to the shadows, getting them to let you inside. Vampire will annoy you, but the joys of being a vampire is worth it. Number 12, Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight has a Metacritic score of 90. I gave it an 8.5. I hate Metroidvanias, but Hollow Knight is easily the best Metroidvania game I've ever played. Hollow Knight is just so cute and adorable and brutal and painful and just everything. It's so challenging and satisfying. If you've been around long enough, you know that I give hard games a hard time in my reviews, but this isn't the case here. Hollow Knight is hard with a purpose, another must-play game on my top 25 list. Number 11, We Happy Few. We Happy Few has a Metacritic score of 67, I gave it an 8.5. The biggest head-scratcher on my list, I get it. I feel like I was literally the only person in the world that loved We Happy Few, and sorry not sorry, but I did. We Happy Few does overstay its welcome and eventually gets dull, but so does everyone's favorite game of the year, Red Dead 2, so I don't want to hear it. Up until that point of okay I get it, We Happy Few is so mysterious and the world is beautiful, creepy, and intriguing. Living in this utopian world, trying to fit in and not seem suspicious. Y'all can hate it as much as you want, I loved it, or maybe I've just had a little too much joy. Number 10, Yoko's Island Express. Yoko's Island Express has a Metacritic score of 84, I gave it a 7.5. The cutest game of the year, while Hollow Knight is the best Metroidvania of the year, Yoko's Island Express is the most fun Metroidvania of the year, and it has a pinball twist. I was in love with this game from start to finish. I love zany cute fresh feeling games and that's exactly what you get here. Playing as a beetle through this giant world that's essentially one big pinball machine. It's cute, it's mildly challenging, and just so colorful and fun. Number 9, Moonlighter. Moonlighter has a Metacritic score of 84. I gave it an 8. I feel like no one else is talking about Moonlighter, but it's so worth talking about. In Moonlighter, you play as a shopkeep, a shopkeep that has to go and fetch his items himself. Moonlighter has such an addictive risk-reward element to gathering and selling materials to get stronger and deeper into the game. Moonlighter will kick your butt at first, but it's so worth getting back up and getting back in there. Number 8, Candleman. Candleman has a Metacritic score of 78. I gave it a 7.5. Candleman is just magic. It feels like a game made by Disney and is the closest thing to Mario I've ever played on a PlayStation console. Here you play as a candle with a limited amount of times to use your light at every checkpoint. It's so clever, cute, and just an amazing little 3D platformer to run through. Number 7, A Way Out. A Way Out has a Metacritic score of 79. I gave it a 7.5. Sadly, A Way Out has to be played with two players but it's so worth finding someone to tag along and see this journey out with you. I love the storytelling here, the clever way it builds tension between players as you go through its campaign. A Way Out is a brilliant cinematic experience, made even better with someone to yell about your side. Number 6, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Kingdom Come Deliverance has a Metacritic score of 76. I gave it a 7.5. Another great game this year not really getting much love. Kingdom Come Deliverance is brutal. In a way, it's the medieval Red Dead Redemption 2 with a high focus on realism and monotony. It's what made me love Red Dead 2. I enjoyed this realistic game slightly more than Red Dead 2, but if you're a fan of either, I truly believe you'll enjoy the other. Unless it's a setting thing. Number 5, Monster Hunter Worlds. Monster Hunter Worlds has a Metacritic score of 90. I gave it an 8.5. Monster Hunter Worlds is one of those games that I just can't deny its greatness. It wasn't for me in the way that Neo last year wasn't for me, but it still ranked high on my list because I love the little time comparatively spent with it. It took me a while to settle in, but once I got the first taste of a hunt, a battle with a monster, it was so hard for me to step away. The game eventually got to be a little too much for me, as fighting enemies began to feel like a chore rather than the initial thrill. But I can't overlook those initial moments. This is Dark Souls meets Destiny. It's brutal, challenging, but you never feel alone. 
Number four, Marvel Spider-Man. Marvel Spider-Man has a Metacritic score of 87. I gave it an 8.5. Marvel Spider-Man is easily the greatest Spider-Man game of all time and quite possibly the best licensed game of all time as well. So much care, attention to detail, polish, and love put into this game. From its missions to its stories, its cinematics, this is a truly special game and it's always so great to see IP such as this in the hands of development teams that actually care. Number three, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch has a Metacritic score of 85. I gave it an 8.5. Wow, I love this game. And as I said earlier, 2018 is the year I finally got around to Nino Kuni, and I'm so glad I did, especially with Wrath of the White Witch. This is such a magical and addictive game. This is the closest thing to ever capture the magic of a Pokemon game I've ever seen. A JRPG fan or just a Pokemon fan, Lobster Current, you owe it to yourself to go back and play this gem if you missed it five years ago like I did. Number two, Detroit Become Human. Detroit Become Human has a Metacritic score of 78. I give it a nine. I'm not sure why everyone hates David Cage's work so much, but I love it. I love Heavy Rain, I love Beyond Two Souls, but more than both of those, I love Detroit Become Human. Say what you will about this game. I found it to be such a beautiful thought piece. Touching on subjects like mental abuse, physical abuse, compassion for things you may not understand. It may just be an interactive movie in the eyes of some gamers, but for me, Detroit Become Human is a near masterpiece of an adventure game with so many possible outcomes around every corner. There's so much in this game that you may never see. And number one, God of War. God of War has a Metacritic score of 94. I gave it a 9.5. I didn't hand out any 10s this year, but God of War is the closest thing to it. Wow is this game masterpiece status. I've always been a fan of this series, and this take on a vulnerable Kratos made me love it even more. And with the addition to his son Atreus, it adds such a clever element to making this game accessible to those that didn't get to play the other games of the series. You're either playing through God of War with the perspective of Kratos or his son. And this is one of the most genius things I've ever seen done in a sequel. God of War is hands down the best game in the series. It's bigger, better, more beautiful, more powerful, more emotional. One of the greatest games to be released this entire generation, and if I had to recommend only one game on this entire list as the must play of 2018, this is it. Thank you guys so much for watching, let me know your top 5 games of 2018 down in the comment section below, and of course, stay beautiful. If you like this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue to bring you reviews for all the newest games at patreon.com slash superkengaming. You'll get access to early audio and video versions of reviews, exclusive Let's Play videos, and you'll even get to choose the game I play next. Thanks for watching, and of course, stay beautiful.